Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Lee Bigenden. I'm the co-founder of Nepos Technologies. Today, I'm joined by Shreya Patel of Nutanix. Welcome, Shreya. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about a topic that a lot of our customers have been asking about in the wake of the Broadcom acquisition of VMware that's, that's just passing through at the moment. And really, it's all about how our customers are trying to leverage the Nutanix platform to mitigate some of that risk and make sure that they have a platform in place for the long term. We're going to be talking today a little bit about Nefos. So we'll give you a brief introduction to our organization and what we do. A little bit about the situation that VMware and Broadcom find themselves in. I'll hand over to Shreera at that point to talk about the Nutanix platform and, and how that works and how that, that's supporting customers in, in what they're trying to achieve today. And then we're going to close out with a little bit of a, a summary of how Nefos are helping customers to make that switch, if you like, or, or future-proof their environments. So as a starting point, I'm going to start with our organization, Nefos. We were founded in 2012, um, and we're specialist data services integration partners focused really on helping large and, and, and mid-sized organizations solve for some of their complex data problems. Very consulting-led in our approach, which essentially means a lot of our work focuses on helping our customers to develop and execute on their data strategies. So whether that's infrastructure-led, like we're talking about today, whether it's data governance, data privacy, or whatever it might be, Essentially, our job, our role in life is to help our customers navigate that environment and make sure that they get the right answers that are fit for purpose for them. Um, that approach has served us very well over the years. Growth from a revenue perspective has been strong, despite everything that's going on in the world today. But the thing that's most interesting for us, and, and I guess... The thing we're probably most proud of is our customer retention rate and the, the way that we work with our clients. We run consistently at 98% plus retention, which I think can really be put down to our company values and, and the way that we engage with our customers. And we've been doing that for a range of customers across industry for a number of years now. So if you look at the likes of WSP, customer reverse, customer mechanics is together. They are one of the world's largest engineering firms with circa 60,000 people employed. Um, for those guys, we have over 330 Nutanix customers, uh, clusters deployed globally today, all the way through to the likes of Genomics England, Cardiff University, Lloyd's Registry, a whole host of customers across industry that, that benefit from those services from us. Um, our framework, if you like, or our areas of better governance, data privacy, and, and the subject really for today's session is more around data infrastructure and high performance infrastructure. And really that's all about helping customers to deliver better performance at lower footprint and lower cost in whatever shape that may take. From an engagement perspective, we work with customers all the way through the journey. So whether that's through from design work, business case development, TCO development, those kinds of things, understanding data center footprint and ESG ratings, those kind of elements, all the way through to project and program delivery and all the way through past delivery into fully managed operations if the customer chooses to go that way. Um, ultimately, very flexible and very concentrated and focused in the areas that, that we excel at. Now... When we look at the market generally, and, and I'm just going to touch on now a little bit about the situation that Broadcom and VMware find themselves in today. Um, obviously, as, as most people will be aware, there is a looming acquisition of VMware by Broadcom. It's a huge acquisition, circa $60 billion, and that's obviously keep causing quite a stir amongst the VMware customers these days. Um, and I think realistically, a lot of that uncertainty and concern comes from Broadcom's track record when it comes to these sorts of acquisition. They're pr probably their 
largest or one of their largest and more recent acquisitions, the, the, the acquisition of Symantec, which was, I think, $10 billion-ish, um, highlight the risk to customers in being locked into those platforms. And when Shreya talks in a little while, she's going to talk a little bit about that flexibility and, and avoiding that kind of lock-in, if you like, to an extent. But ultimately, when Broadcom made that acquisition, there was a very clear statement about focusing on Symantec's top 2,000 global clients. Now, when you consider the size of Symantec's install base, um, that leaves a little over 100,000 customers in the lurch, potentially, not to mention partners, organizations like ours, that our customers, that organizations like yours rely on to help deliver services. So when you consider that, widespread deployment of VMware, that's becoming a huge concern for organizations today. We've already seen, even though the acquisition hasn't yet gone through, we've already seen in the press, this is all, this is all public information, the fact that VMware are starting to shed jobs, shut down departments. I think the most recent was a product development function. And this isn't scaremongering, this is just reality, right? This is just the facts as we see them in terms of what's happening in the market and also um, some of the real concerns that we we're seeing from customers and more and more they're they're looking for alternatives um if nothing else to protect themselves from that potential risk now when it comes to alternatives um there are a number out in the market i would say nutanix are probably in the box seat there um if you look at the worldwide hci market the hyperconverged market nutanix are leaders in that space with kind of 46% market share. And they're consistently recognized as a leader and an innovator in their field when it comes to the broader market. You add that into the fact that Nutanix give you choice over hardware provisioning, multiple different OEM partnerships, the ability to run in cloud with the hyperscalers. And there's a lot of benefit there in the approach generally and a lot of flexibility. And Nutanix are kind of unique in that fact. And that's why we feel Nutanix are the best positioned to kind of support customers moving forward to give them that longevity that they're looking for and protect them from some of those issues or potential risks. Um, at that point, I'm just going to pause there and hand over to Shreya to introduce the Nutanix platform and, and some of their capabilities. Nutanix is a software company that was founded in 2009. We pioneered the market with our hyperconverged infrastructure, which resulted in 24,500 plus customers and global customers, should I say. Now, out of these customers, we have around 225 plus UK public sector customers spanning across local government, healthcare, higher education, blue light. But we've also focused on other top vertical markets, such as financial services, legal, retail as well. Now, our Gartner Peer Insight rating and NPS score uh, clearly show how our customers feel when moving to Nutanix. 95% um, of respondents uh, would re recommend Nutanix uh, to their peers uh, with a 4.7 out of 5 rating. Now, we're also really pr proud of holding an NPS score of plus 90 for about eight consecutive years and this is due to our industry leading support which we worked really hard on to build and we'll touch on that as we go on now we understand sustainability is also playing a huge part in businesses today and you're looking at ways to put it into action and also ways to reduce costs so that you can spend that type of money on other parts of the business now due to consolidating infrastructure and how we do it which we'll go on into in a minute we see less energy consumption compared to three tier architectures with customers seeing better TCO and ROI savings as well. So as mentioned, we started with HCI and pioneered in this area. We saw customers running very siloed uh, environments uh, where there were different moving parts such as separate storage, compute, networking, and that all had different management in order to control and top troubleshoot, which we could see being a large pain. Now, Nutanix consolidated that compute, that storage and networking and built in that virtualization, which helped customers reduce their data center, uh, data center footprint, leading to lower costs. Now with technology changing and now businesses looking at how can we better our IT infrastructure, we're starting to see 
um, hybrid multi-cloud uh, becoming the new frontier. Now we've built on our HCI innovation, so exactly what I explained earlier, and build that full stack to meet modern IT infrastructure needs. So having that compute, that networking and data services to all support those applications as well as an automated operations and integrating sort of those self-service capabilities as well. Now with businesses looking at breaking down those silos across public cloud, whether that be AWS and Azure, on-premise or edge locations, we can offer top performance and reliability uh, for critical business apps as well. So you're able to scale easily based on your workload requirements and the flexibility to run those apps in anywhere you want and wherever they belong best. Now, we as Nutanix are here to make more hybrid multi-cloud simple. Now, you have the ability to run your workloads and your applications, whether that to be databases, virtual desktops, cloud native apps, and run them anywhere based on your needs. We've seen many businesses and we've had uh, conversations with many businesses who have started to look at more of a cloud first approach as well. And even though their current environment is on premise or they even just have a little pocket of public cloud at present today. Now having Nutanix gives you that freedom of choice and we're big believers in that, that whatever location you pick, whether that be public cloud or on premise or both, or even the edge locations, you have that ability to move those applications without refactoring, making your life a lot more simple. Now, if you see that your businesses, for example, decides to move to AWS and then takes a turn to be like, okay, do you know what? We're actually gonna look at Azure. You still have that ability to move those applications seamlessly without refactoring and have the ability to bring those workloads back on-prem if you feel that not best suited in the cloud. So again, we believe in that freedom of choice. Now, with the Broadcom acquisition, you can see, we see a lot of uncertainty that our VMware customers and non-Mutanix customers are facing. For example, in billing and in IT uh, environments itself. And to mitigate any uncertainties that these changes may present, we want to make sure our customers are able to have that flexibility and support to help eliminate this. For example, our customers can migrate to Nutanix uh, using Nutanix AH3. So AH3 is an enterprise ready hypervisor that you're able to run all your workloads and is comparable to VMware vSphere. Our idea behind AH3 is that there shouldn't be a cost associated to running your virtualization layer as it should just simply work, which is why AH3 is included and license free for you to use. Now we provide a foundation for your journey to the hybrid cloud as well. Um, if you are, if you want to run ESXi on Nutanix, you still have the ability. So you have, you're able to test out how AHV works. So we can run PDOCs, HPOCs and test drives as well, which you can access through our website. And then when you're ready to make that change and you're comfortable that AHV is the way forward for me, we can make that switch and you're able to manage even more of your stack with Nutanix. Now with that, you also have the ability to run pockets of workloads. For example, if you're running a test dev environment or you're running a BDI environment, it can be based on your workloads and the choice is yours. We don't want you feeling overwhelmed. Um, so you do have the ability to run those small pockets um, until you're comfortable to make the shift and know that's the best way forward for you and your business. But touching on a little bit more on what AHV provides. Now with AHV, the complexity and costs of traditional virtualization are removed, making on-premise virtualization much more closer to the public cloud experience. Like public cloud, AHV is included and license-free and is delivered from the same interface that manages the entire environment. Tens of thousands of Nutanix customers use AHV successfully um, in their data centers with around 63% uh, having that as our adoption rate. Now, security has always been the front of our mind and it's always at the front of the mind of many businesses. Therefore, where we see um, other technologies bolt on that security, we're able to make um, build that in from the get-go by automating that process and we still continue to do making those improvements in terms of security. No matter what the technology is underneath that you decide, or if you're using a mixture, you have the consistency with AHV that it powers 
for cloud and you don't have to worry about those applications. You have the ability to have that full stack control that you may have always wanted. Now, we continuously find our ways and many ways to integrate new technologies and develop AHV as a hypervisor because we want to optimize it for your use as well. Therefore, your feedback is always important. We take customer feedback very, and we use that to roadmap and look at ways that we can improve AHV for your needs. So we're able to make improvements to make it efficient as well. So such as optimizing IO as an example. Now for customers who are now looking at what is the comparison? What do we see the difference between AHV and VMware with Nutanix? So if we work our way from the bottom to the top, we can see that the HCI layer, things are about the same. There are many nuances and there may be nuances, but they're generally quite the same. Now, as we build up to virtualization, things are, are also appear to be the same, but now the differences start to show with networking. With VMware, you have NSX, and with that, you need RNI for additional virtualization, but we include virtualization with Flow, which is our version of NSX, and we expand on that going forward. Now, management. Now, at this point is where the major differences start to begin. It's not just vCenter, but all the other products that are provided that you can see, where on the AHV side, you, we start to consolidate that all into one. Now, this is where you see the simplicity with Nutanix AHV. There are far fewer components to manage um, and configure, which is the most important when planning those upgrades, which can be very complex and troubleshooting. Now, Prism provides analytics, so that's our management tool where you get your analytics, your orchestration, your automation with the ability to manage your entire environment uh, with a single console. So no matter what you decide to use within the Nutanix portfolio compared to having separate products um, and separate configurations and maintenance and troubleshooting consoles, you have the ability to have that all managed through one console, making everything a lot more simple, which is what we want to provide you. Now, question is, so how do we move to new to AHV on our existing environment? Now, Nutanix provides users with an easy migration process developed into a free tool called Move. Now, Move is a cross-cluster hypervisor mobility solution to migrate your VMs from multiple sources, whether that be ESXi, Hyper-V, AWS, Azure, to Nutanix AHV. Now, furthermore, the recent move to bi-directional workload mobility, we enable organizations like yourselves to adopt cloud technologies as well, so AWS and Azure, without fear of vendor lock-in. So like I mentioned, whether if the business chooses to go down AWS and then suddenly makes the shift to Azure, you don't have to worry about that at all. And um, we have that all covered. Now, this allows you to move your applications, such as your Windows servers, Ubuntu, CentOS, and more automatically without with the included benefits of you know, faster cutover times, higher reliability, and stronger security. So we have thousands of customers who use who have used this, and with Move, we have around thirty thousand migrations that happen per quarter using this tool. So why Nutanix? Now, what can Nutanix hybrid multi-cloud platform do for you essentially? Now, we build a hybrid cloud in hours compared to days, weeks, and months, so that can accelerate your transformation to to Nutanix and the initiatives that you have as a business. We manage all your data center clouds and edge points as one for a consistent, secure operating environment. We built in that security, not only built-in security, not only prevents and detects security threats, but also helps to prevent data loss um, and ensure continuous business operations due to the way that we are architected. We deliver 53% more efficient IT infrastructure management Efficiency means that you can focus more on those important tasks within the business and you're able to migrate workloads up to 60% faster to the cloud versus refactoring all of them. Now delivering, we also deliver around 51% uh, uh, savings versus cloud native um, and 43% savings versus three-tier on-prem infrastructure. It's 
proven that uh, organizations using public cloud end up paying the same cost for their test and dev development environment applications as they do for a highly critical production um, application as well. So here we can look at cost savings and we can involve our uh, cloud economists to do a bit more of a TCO on your environment as well. We enable total portability for all workloads, um, including licenses to ensure you, know, you have that optimal placement of your workloads, whether that be on public cloud or on-prem. You have the ability to future-proof your environment and have that ability to move your licenses between those different locations to know when it's best suited. Now, as I mentioned earlier about our NPS score, now that this is the benefits of why that is the way it is. Now, an NPS score is measured about how likely people are to recommend Nutanix to their peers. The average software company has around NPS score of 30, which is a testament to our excellent customer support. So what drives this uh, Nutanix support excellence? There is no contract people involved. We only have full-time employees working on your case. Nutanix does not employ a tiered support model with different levels of support engineers. The Site Rel Reliability Engineer, or also known as an SRE, that takes that initial support request will handle the case until resolution. So customers are not waiting for handoffs within the support team for it to be resolved. It is resolved by the initial case owner. Only Nutanix customers decide when a case is resolved, so to your satisfaction, and we do not close a support ticket on our own. So until you are happy, that's when you close that ticket. So this is one of the reasons for our net promoter score and our customer satisfaction of 97%. We recommend you speaking to our reference customers who are able to speak to you about their journey to Nutanix as well. So if you're interested in having us set this up, then please do reach out to uh, Nutanix. I'm going to pass this over to you. Please. Thanks, Shreya. That's a really good overview of Nutanix and, and the role that Nutanix can play to help um solve for some of these challenges that customers have today so i really appreciate that um i guess as a as a final part of the puzzle we obviously appreciate that sometimes cost of change can be a factor in these things and quite often that cost of change or the perceived risk of doing something differently can hold people back really from innovating and making a change so one of the last pieces of information we wanted to share was really around how we as Nafos can support you in your journey. And we just wanted to discuss that briefly in terms of that kind of support capability, if you like. Now, this is really where we as a business come into the fore. Um, we are one of a handful of what Nutanix call a champion partner here in the UK. Um, essentially, that is Nutanix's top tier of partnership um, and requires a company like ours to invest an awful lot of time and effort in predominantly technical enablement and training. Ultimately, we have to prove to the, the people of Nutanix um, that we have the ability to support our customers from a technical standpoint that, uh, that really allows us to deploy and manage and, and design Nutanix platforms for our clients. What that boils down to in reality are kind of three core areas that we work with our customers on. The first is around design services. Quite often we see customers challenged slightly with the fact that they've been working in the same way for a long time and Nutanix is potentially a new platform for them. So quite often they need support in terms of that design aspect, i.e. what does our infrastructure look like tomorrow if we move to Nutanix? What's the design of that platform? How do we drive the best performance from it? What does it do to our network? What, how do we need to change anything there? What does it do? Or do we have to back our data up differently? All of those kinds of elements that come into the conversation when we're looking at, at, at moving to a new platform in Nutanix. So that's the first piece. And that's the first stage that, that we often help customers with. The second is the actual deployment and migration. So this is really all around making sure that uh, all the way from physical deployment of equipment through to base configuration. And then as, as Shreya mentioned earlier, um, 
leveraging the Nutanix Move technology to help migrate workloads um, onto the Nutanix OCI platform. We also do not just virtual workloads in that space, but we also do an awful lot of work when it comes to unstructured and file data and migrating that data into the new world, if you like. Um, at that point, you've got two options. As a customer, we give you the keys and you can manage it yourselves. Or for some clients, they want that extra um, support, if you like. I think, personally, I think this is something that may well become more commonplace based on the current economic environment as well. But we are seeing more and more customers looking at us to manage that infrastructure for them moving forward. And that's absolutely something we can support with. A bit like Nutanix, all our team, all our staff, and we take that customer success piece and that, that need to really deliver value is a critical success factor for us as we do that. Now, to give you an example of where that's worked for us so far before, one of our clients are a joint client of ours with Nutanix, and they were in a world where they had some legacy three-tier architecture. So Dell Compellent Storage, Brocade Fiber Channel over Ethernet switching, all of, I guess all of the things that most organizations have had over the years when it comes to a three-tier architecture, a server estate based on ESX. And all of this was creaking and becoming more complex to manage for them. And essentially, the customer in question was looking at a harmonization program to bring this technology together and drive greater efficiency. In the background, like a lot of our customers, there is a desire to leverage the cloud. For them, it's AWS. But also, they didn't quite know how best to do that and how to optimize the cost balance between it. Nephos were engaged by this customer to do a couple of things. Firstly, understand what the current estate looked like. What do we have today? What we, what, what's the utilization of our infrastructure? What's the cost of our current infrastructure? What's our refresh cost of our infrastructure? Because they had a, a number of significant refreshes looming. And then take those things, map those to what we're trying to do as a business map those to the outcomes that we're looking for and give us a strategy that allows us to harmonize our infrastructure on a global scale. And essentially that's what we did for them as a first phase. So as part of that work, we identified circa 50% of the workloads in place that were suitable candidates to move to the cloud in their case, AWS. And as Shreya said earlier, if you look at some of those workloads, they're the workloads where actually you want the ability to be agile with it. You want the ability to switch it on and off again, like test and dev. In some cases, it was slightly different where you want uh, the content distribution network that someone like AWS has is extremely beneficial. So, so really for us, it's all about putting the right data and the work, right workloads in the right place. For the on-premise infrastructure, there was a lot of services that had to remain there for one reason or another, either um, from a security perspective, they weren't comfortable with the risk of putting that in cloud or the application vendor in question that they were using don't support a cloud model. There's a number of different factors there, right? So what we did was we looked to consolidate out the infrastructure that remained on premise and we leveraged Nutanix to do that. In doing so, what that allowed us to do was essentially move from half a dozen racks of physical racks of kit in co-location all the way down to half a rack. We've removed the fiber channel over Ethernet because Nutanix is all Ethernet based. So again, we've removed the need for the kind of complex switching network with high cost, not bespoke, but nearly bespoke equipment. We've removed VMware as the hypervisor layer there was no need to maintain that when for this particular customer's purposes, AHV gives them all of the capability that they require. And we consolidated down that infrastructure. That was consolidation in terms of cost, in terms of management, and in terms of data center footprint itself, which has obvious impacts on the SG rate. What we then did was take a backup platform for this particular customer, we actually leveraged Veeam. And we take those backups and we push those into our DR point, our restore point. We take our file data, 
for them and we move that into an edge caching approach uh, and tier that data into AWS as well. So really what we were able to do was align the re technical requirements and the business direction and the business requirements of, of this customer um, with the right fit from a technical perspective. And in doing so, what we were able to do was reduce their cost base by nearly 70% over seven years, which is a huge reduction in cost. The other benefit that it drove for them was that, and, and again, Shreya touched on this earlier, Nutanix is centrally managed or can be centrally managed. So what we've been able to do as a kind of secondary phase is take this architecture, this reference architecture, and replicate that across half a dozen different global regions to make it centrally managed, to harmonize the infrastructure. And in doing so, what that has enabled the customer to do is create a better internal service support model for their regional offices. Really super important to them as a business. And that was the thing that was really driving a large proportion of the program of work there. So in summary, to close this off, what are we saying? I think we like the better together message. There are a number of tangible benefits that this sort of approach can bring a customer or bring an organization. I've touched on some of them there, reduced physical footprint, reduced cost, simplified management, future proofing and reduced risk. Now, when I talk about future proofing, when I talk about reduced risk, really this comes back down to Nutanix's ability to be agnostic of the hardware and the hypervisor. So if you want to maintain VMware, if actually you love VMware, it's a great platform, but we're concerned about the commercial risk that potentially is looming. Actually, that's fine. Keep VMware, but modernize the stack to enable you and give you the flexibility to migrate and pivot if you need to. Similarly with the hardware piece, you know, Nutanix have their own hardware platform that we can leverage, but we can also leverage the likes of Cisco or HPE, Lenovo. There's a number, Supermicro, there's a number of different hardware platforms that we can leverage the software on, again, giving you flexibility. Also linked to that is Nutanix's ability to bridge that gap into the hyperscalers, into public cloud. So whether it's AWS, GCP, Microsoft, Azure, whatever it might be, giving you that flexibility. And what we're trying to do, uh, and our role in all of this as Nefos is to be that trusted partner. We want to support our customers in getting the outcomes that they're looking for. And that's really critical for us as a business. So with that kind of brings everything to a close on behalf of myself, Nefos and, and Shreya and Nutanix, we'd like to thank you all for joining us for the session. Hopefully it's been useful for you and you've got a bit more understanding as to what Nefos and Nutanix can deliver. Um, if you'd like to more, learn more about our business or Nutanix, you can visit us at nefostechnologies.com or visit the team at Nutanix. There's a lot of great content on there about the platform at nutanix.com. Uh, and it gives you a, an opportunity to find out more about, about both of our organizations. Thank you very much for joining us.